Millionaires are the elite class of any society. Big houses, big cars, big holidays, and to have this, they need a hell of a lot of money. It is said the average millionaire has seven different sources of income. In this video, I break down all seven and share tips on how you can too. First up is earned income. This is the easiest to understand as it is how many of us make a living through a job. For employees, this includes wages, salaries, tips, and bonuses. While for those who are self-employed, this would include their net earnings. You might be surprised to hear that millionaires earn a wage as well, just like us. But this can arise in many situations. First, many millionaires continue to make the majority of their money through employment. Some, in as little as a year. Here's a list of the top paid CEOs in New Zealand, all of which draw annual wage in surplus of a million dollars and by quite some margin. Second, many millionaires sit on the board of a company and draw a salary as compensation for doing so. And third, some millionaires continue to work on an ad hoc basis, not always for monetary reasons. An example of this was the millionaire entrepreneur Derek Handley, who worked for the government as their chief technology officer. Another example is many millionaires have speaking gigs and things like that. The issue with earned income for many millionaires is taxation. As a salaried worker, you cannot raise expenses to reduce your taxable income, like a business owner can for example. This is why many people say that millionaires don't pay their fair share of tax. It's because earned income is taxed the most heavily in nearly every single country around the world. As we'll get to later in the video, unearned or capital-based income is often the least taxed. To generate earned income, there are many things you can do in addition to your day job. First, you can take on additional hours at your current employer. Second, you could also take on additional jobs outside of your first job. Or third, you could start a side hustle online. These are all good options. To increase your earned income, you could also upskill and gain new qualifications, which in turn would push up your income. Building a strong earned income base offers a stable financial foundation from which to build out your other income streams. If you are currently working in a job, use that as a base to leapfrog into some of the other income streams we'll be covering in this video. The second source of income for millionaires is profit income. This dynamic and potentially lucrative income stream is usually generated from running a business. A product-based business typically purchase inventory from a wholesaler. They would then add value to the product to ensure they could sell it for a higher price and therefore make a profit income. There are many ways to add value to realize a profit. Here on Alibaba, you can see a hair curler for for 10 US dollars, or about 15 New Zealand dollars. Tidal here, on the other hand, manages to sell virtually the same product for eight times higher at $120. The branding and distribution strategy allows them to capture more value from the product, elevating their profit income. A service-based business, on the other hand, involves an arbitrage of labor costs. For example, if your staff are hired at $30 an hour, to turn a profit, you may need to hire them out on jobs at closer to $100 an hour to cover overheads. The profit income lies in the middle as a reward for finding someone that wanted a job done for $100 an hour and a worker willing to give up an hour in exchange for $30. Outside product and service-based businesses is a new category, content. In the modern time, creators are making money through blogs, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, among many others. The levels of monetization are endless. You have ad placements, product placements, affiliate links, courses, among many others. So this too is a growing way to make profit income. The advantage of profit income is its scalability. When you generate earned income, usually that requires trading your time for money. With a business, you can infinitely scale your income by employing more resources, such as taking on more staff, larger premises, more inventory, that kind of thing. That comes with its tax advantages too, as the amount spent to scale is also tax deductible, offering incentives to grow and expand. The drawbacks to growing your profit income streams is the risk, effort, and investment you need to put in. Often, it can take years to see results. If starting a business sounds scary, Buying an existing business is also a common approach and it allows you to hit the ground running from day one. So that covers profit income. The third way that millionaires make their money is through interest income. Kinda lame, right? But when you're a millionaire, chances are you have a fair bit of cash. With interest rates as high as 5% at the moment, just having a million bucks in the bank would net about $50,000 in interest income. So it's not a small amount. Interest income, of course, is revenue earned by lending money to others, including banks, 
companies, or even governments. These take the form of savings accounts, term deposits, bonds, and money market accounts. The problem with interest income, unfortunately, is that it requires a fair bit of money in the first place to make decent returns. But the benefit of it over our first two forms of income is that it's fully passive. I mean, you could catch one of Elon Musk's rocket ships to Mars, hang out for a bit, then return, and you'd come back richer than when you left, without even lifting a finger. Depending on how your money is structured, you could even have tax advantages over earned income. In New Zealand, for example, we have PIE funds that have a maximum tax rate of 28% versus the 39% tax rate on income. But all in all, this is a super conservative investment. It's vulnerable to inflation, and we should move on to more exciting income sources for millionaires. The fourth income stream of millionaires is related to interest income, and that's dividend income. It should come as no surprise that many millionaires own stock. For that matter, most of us should also also have stocks through our superannuation accounts like KiwiSaver. Dividend income is basically where a business makes a profit and pays it out to its shareholders or owners. When you buy shares, you're really buying a piece of the business. There are generally three types of dividends. The first is a cash dividend, where the company sends money to all of its owners. Second is a stock dividend, where the company issues new shares to shareholders. Third is a special dividend, which is a once-off dividend, which usually takes place after the company has sold off a major part of its business. Many people invest in stocks just for the dividends. Companies like Coca-Cola and Ford pay a stable form of dividend income to its owners each year. These are generally competitive when compared to interest income rates. In the US and Singapore, Dividends can also be tax advantaged as their governments look to incentivize private citizens investing in local companies. Here at New Zealand, however, we're taxed at the same rates as earned income, unless we do so through a pie fund as we covered before. To maximize dividend income, make sure to seek out companies that not only pay a high dividend yield, but have done so over a long period of time. I created videos in the past looking at the highest dividend companies in New Zealand, Australia, and the US, so make sure to check those out. If your employer has an ESOP or an employee stock options program, those can be a great option too. We are now halfway, and the fifth income stream used by millionaires is rental income. This is a robust income stream derived by leasing out properties or assets. Most commonly, rental income is sourced by both residential and commercial real estate. Residential of course refers to houses and apartments, while commercial refers to warehouses, retail shops, or even storage units. Another option to earn rental income is through renting or leasing out assets like vehicles, machinery, equipment, and the sort. The benefit of rental income is its stable cash flows. Often, you'll have a contract in place guaranteeing a future income at a set rate. Also, you don't need to sell anything. Somebody simply comes along, takes possession of your asset for a while, and then returns it in the same or near condition. So if we are talking about a residential house, not only are you earning a rental income, but you'll also earn another type of income we'll cover next. Rental income is also a great inflation hedge, as you can usually increase your rates in line with inflation. Depending on where you're based, you may even get some tax advantages here too. The challenge with this income is the amount of capital required to purchase the assets in the first place. This is where millionaires excel, as they are able to deploy their millions into assets that generate rent income. Also, there can be a fair bit of ongoing work to deal with the renting parties, where there's disagreements and risk and vacancy during economic downturns. If you have a fair bit of equity and are looking to build your rental income sources, in New Zealand, property investing is a common way to go. Make sure to have a good accountant that can guide you through how to best structure the investments and make use of tax concessions like depreciation and interest deductibility. Sixth up, we have a contentious one here in New Zealand, capital gains. Many wouldn't classify this as an income, but if you're good at finding these opportunities, it may as well be an income. Capital gains basically cover any situation where you sell an asset for more than you bought it for. This could include stocks, real estate, crypto, anything along those lines. There are generally two types. There's short term, which is usually a year or less, as well as long term, held for more than a year. Watch out for differences in the way they're treated for tax. Here in New Zealand, for example, capital gains are generally untaxed. The exception to this is the Brightline tax on property held for a short period of time and a tax on stock purchases if you're deemed to be a trader. Cryptocurrency trading also has its own tax treatment too, so make sure to look out for that. As you can tell, tax is a major topic when it comes to capital gains. This is because many millionaires made their fortunes through capital gains, 
and governments have tried many ways to tax this activity while not disincentivizing investment and business activity. So when it's said that the rich aren't paying their fair share of tax, it's because earned income is generally higher taxed than capital gains. And capital gains is where the millionaires are really playing. In the United States, short-term capital gains are taxed at marginal income rates, while long-term capital gains are taxed at between 0 and 20%, depending on your income level. In stocks, many investors would also sell at the end of the year in what's called tax loss harvesting. Realizing a loss on your worst trades allows you to offset this loss against the profits on your best trades, therefore reducing your tax bill. But mindful that this is something that is unique to the United States. Charitable donations are another common approach for similar effect. If you're wanting to build your capital gains income, look at your investment options including stocks, real estate, crypto, precious metals like gold, and a range of other asset classes. In New Zealand, it is said that as many as 9.6% of adults are millionaires. Dare I say, most of this would have been generated through capital gains on property. So that is a good place to start. The seventh and final income source that many millionaires make is called royalty income. Income. This is not the same as what King Charles makes, but rather it's a passive income received from others' use of your assets, such as intellectual property. This could include patents, copyrights, trademarks, franchise rights, books, songs, among many others. You may have watched Shark Tank before, where royalties refer to either the shark or the entrepreneur negotiating a rate of income based on every unit the business sells. The US also has a concept called mineral rights, where landowners give prospectors access to their land for extracting minerals like oil and precious metals in exchange for a royalty on whatever's found. Many millionaires, especially in the entertainment space, made their fortunes through royalty income. Scooter Braun, for instance, bought Taylor Swift's Music Masters, which paid royalties every time her music was played on the radio or on Spotify. Michael Jackson even did the same with the Masters of the Beatles. The advantage of royalties is that they are passive. Once the work to create the asset has been completed, the income then rolls without much effort. Tax-wise, again, it depends on where you're based. The disadvantage of this income Income source is its unpredictable nature, as your works might not always have value. Radios could stop playing your song, your land might run out of minerals, or your patents might become obsolete over time. It can also be hard to uphold your IP rights, especially across borders, which can become expensive to maintain. If you're looking to create royalty income, think about what you can offer the world that holds value, such as a book, a patent, or even a business franchise. Now, throughout this video, we've looked at seven income sources common among millionaires. By balancing active and passive income sources, millionaires have managed to compound their wealth and tap into many opportunities to make their money. We shouldn't envy millionaires. Rather, we should look to replicate their success. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe down below. I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.